Instructions. The listening test is 45 minutes. There are tasks in the two parts of the listening test. Each task consists of a recorded video or audio scenario. The number of questions for each task also varies depending on the length of the video or audio. There are multiple choice questions for some listening, listening tasks and shift-to-shift -shift report for others. After you have completed all the tasks in the listening section, you may have some time remaining. You can use this time to navigate back to previous tasks to check your answers. Now get ready for the test and follow the instructions. Part 1. Tasks 1 to 4 Instructions. You will listen to a short audio or video recorded conversation and answer the questions. While listening, select the correct answer from the options provided for each question. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a patient in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Hello. Hello. My name is Nora. I am one of the registered nurses here. I'll be looking after you today. Oh, hello Nora. Thank you for helping me. Can you tell me a bit about the cut on your leg? Oh yes. I was a bit silly. I forgot to eat breakfast and felt a bit dizzy. I ran into a sharp edge. I ran into a sharp edge of the table and got a bad cut. Oh, dear. That's no good. Can you lift up your skirt a bit and show me where the cut is? Yes, I will show you. It's on my chin, on my right leg. Yes, I can see it now. Does your leg hurt? Not now. It hurt a lot of the table. Now it just looks a mess. The cut is very deep. Yes, it is very deep, but don't worry we'll see to it for you. I'll explain what we are going to do now. Firstly, I'll clean the cut with some sterile water. Okay, thank you. I didn't clean it at home. My friend drove me straight into hospital. That's, that's all right. You did the right thing coming to hospital. You will need some stitches because it's a deep cut. Yes, I thought so. It won't heal otherwise, will it? No, the cut is too deep to heal without stitches. After you get the stitches I'll put a clean dressing on. I see. But what do I have to do with the dressing when I go home? You need to keep the dressing clean and dry. It's a good idea to put a plastic bag on your leg before you have a shower. That way the dressing won't get wet. What about having a bath? I usually prefer to have a bath in the evenings. No, it's better to have a shower rather than a bath. The dressing would get too wet in the bath. It would be safe bath. It would be safer to sit on a chair in the shower. Do you have a shower chair? I see. Yes, I do have a shower chair which I use when I have the shower. I am a little unsteady on my feet so I don't like to stand in the shower. The next thing is that you need to clean the wound and change the dressing every three days. I'll ask the nurse to come and do that for you, if you like. Thank you. I don't think I could manage it myself. I can't bend down easily so it would be hard to reach my lower leg to do the dressing. I understand what you are saying. The last thing about your wound is that you should have the stitches out in 7 to 10 days time. The community nurse will take them out for you. Oh, that would be helpful. It's quite difficult to get to my doctor. She is a long way from my house and I have to ask a friend to drive me. It's not very convenient, I'm afraid. Yes. I can see that it must be difficult. Is it alright if I ask you some questions about how you are managing to look after yourself at home? Certainly. I get by all right. It's a bit difficult at times because I live on my own. Right. Can you tell me how you manage with your meals? Not very well, I'm afraid. I find it hard to cook with my arthritis. 
Sometimes I just can't be bothered at all. I just have a sandwich and a cup of tea. What about doing shopping? Can you manage to go shopping on your own? No. I usually have to wait for my neighbor to offer to take me. I don't like to ask her because I know that she is a busy person. It must be difficult for you. Have you thought about having meals on wheels? They bring the food to your house every day, every day so you can be sure of the healthy meal. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. I have heard the meals are not very nice. Someone told me that they bring fruit that you don't like. I think there are some meals that you may like. I can arrange for someone to talk to you so you can pick which sort of food you would like. The important thing about Meals on Wheels is that you will have a healthy day. It would be better than just having a sandwich and a cup of tea. Oh, I just don't know what to think. I know it's not good to only eat sandwiches but it's hard for me to cook a meal. Would you be willing to try Meals on Wheels for a week? I think it would be a big help to you. I suppose I could try it for a week, I'll try it if I can say what sort of food I like. like. That's great. Do you have any questions for me now? No, I don't think so. Oh yes, just one. Do you have the phone number of the community nurse? Yes, sure. I'll give you a card with the phone numbers on it. I have a card for the community nurses in the office. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a patient's mother in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. It's mi it's Mrs. Johnson, isn't it? I believe your daughter got burnt last night. Can you tell me how it happened? Yes, I was cooking dinner last night. I was busy and I got distracted. I shouldn't have done it. I know I should have taken more care. The phone rang and I went out of the kitchen to answer it. That's okay. Answer it. That's okay. Take it slowly. I want to make sure I understand correctly. So you were cooking dinner last night and what happened then? I was cooking rice and my daughter wanted to see what I was doing. She wanted to see how much rice I was cooking. That's when she tipped the hot water on herself and when she burned herself. I see. That must have been very frightening for you and for your daughter. It was awful. It happened so fast too. Yes, it can happen very fast. Can you tell me what you did first? You know, to do something about the burns. All I could think of was to take my daughter's shirt off and soak it in cold water. I put the wet shirt over the burns on her arm. Did I do the right thing? I just did what I thought was right. Yes, you did the right thing. People used to put butter on burns but it's the worst thing you can do. You made the right choice. But I feel so guilty. Look at her arms. Sh terrible scars. I know it looks awful now but it will look a lot better when the burns start to heal. Try not to feel guilty. Children at this age are very inquisitive. They just want to look at everything but they don't realize the dangers. Scalds on the arms, especially the hands and fingers are very common. 
and scalds most often happen in the kitchen. But I shouldn't have answered the phone. If only I had stayed in the kitchen. I don't know. I feel so bad. I can see that you feel bad about the accident, but I think it's important to focus on what we are going to do now, to treat the burns, okay? Oh yes, okay. What happens now? What are you going to do? She's in a lot of pain. The first thing, I'll do is to give her something for the pain. Then when the pain is under control, I'm going to wash her arm very gently, and put on some special cream to help stop infection. The last thing, is to make sure, she is drinking enough. Can you help with that, with that? Yes, sure. I'll give her sips of water, whenever I can. That's great. Look, I'm really worried about the scarring. I want my daughter, to see a specialist now, before it gets worse. I know, your daughter's skin looks bad now, because her skin is very red. Your daughter dressings, to the burns for quite some time, but it will look better, once the skin starts to heal. Yes, but I'm still worried about the scarring. Isn't there anything that can be done about it? After the burn has healed, your daughter will be seen by a burn specialist, to look at any scarring. I know, it's difficult, but the skin has to heal first. There are some very good treatments these days, so please try not to worry too much. Okay, but it's difficult to take it all in. I know, it is difficult to remember everything, so you might find this leaflet helpful. Read through the leaflet, and ask us, if you have any questions. There is also a contact number, at the bottom of the leaflet. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a visitor in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Hello, nurse. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I wondered if you could tell me how Mrs. Smith's operation went. Can I ask whether you are Mrs. Smith's relation or next of kin? Oh, I'm as good as a relative. I'm her best friend. She'll tell you. I have lived next door for 10 years. I'm sorry, but I'm not, but I'm not able to discuss Mrs. Smith's case with you. But, I'm sure, she wouldn't mind. We've been friends for a long time. I have the key to her front door, that's how close we are. We tell each other everything. If it weren't for me, she'd never have anyone visiting her. Those kids of hers just ignore her. I know, it must be difficult for you, but I have to respect Mrs. Smith's right to privacy. We are not allowed to discuss patient care with anyone, but the patient, unless the patient gives us permission. Well I just thought, you know. I just wanted to know if they found anything. You know, like cancer. She'd be really upset. I'm only thinking of her. I can see, you are a very caring neighbor. She must be happy to have you around. Unfortunately, we have very strict rules about patient information. I just can't discuss her case with you. I can tell you that, 
She is feeling better today, and I'm sure she'd be pleased to see you. Well, I looked in just now, but she's asleep, and I'll have to go now to catch the bus. I've come such a long way too. I am sorry. I can tell her you called in. I'm sure she'll phone you later. Okay, I understand. Well, can you please tell her Mrs. Singh came in? Mrs. Singh from next door. She'll know and wish her all the best. I will. I leave her a note in case I finished my shift before she wakes up. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. You will watch a dialogue between a nurse and a patient in a video scenario. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions. Listen to the recording and select your answers. Hello, Mrs. Song. I'm going to explain what will happen after your breast reconstruction. Is that okay? Please tell. I don't know much about it. After your surgery, we'll check your breasts every hour for the first four hours. I see. Okay. You may have numbness around your nipples after the surgery. Don't worry, this is quite normal. A numb feeling. I didn't know that. How long will it last? It could be for a while, even up to a few months after the operation. Oh well, it's good to know that it's normal. Yes, it's quite normal. You need to wear your new sports bra all day for the first week. Then you can just wear it during the day. Okay. So, wear the bra day and night for the first week. Make sure that you sleep upright during the first week as well. Do you mean sleep sitting up in bed? That's right. It will be more comfortable for you too. What about scars? I don't want to get any scars on my breasts. You will get exercises which will help with this. One last thing. Watch for any signs of infection in your breasts. Call us if you are worried at all. Thank you. I'll do that. In case if you have any doubt, you can ask anytime. Thank you so much. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Part 2. Tasks 5 Instructions. Listen to the report and dialogue and circle the correct answers as you listen. Task 5A, Shift to Shift Report. As you listen to the Shift to Shift Report, 
Circle the best choice for each room and patient. You will get 45 seconds to read the questions on the chart before the audio begins. Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the evening shift report for Thursday, November 2nd. Room 260. Mr. Jacob is recovering. His blood pressure was high yesterday. So the concerned doctor prescribed him to continue the medicine benazepril. He is very aggressive and won't be soothed by your extra attention and may become belligerent, may become belligerent, demanding to know such things as why isn't my treatment working? Or, why aren't my medications ready yet? Room 273, Mr. Ethan, had an elective bilateral inguinal hernia repair this morning. His wound is covered and dry and his post-operative observations are stable. Temp is 37, his blood pressure 140 on 70. He's already started eating a little and his walking is tolerate. Analgesia is written up but he hasn't needed anything. He's planned for discharge tomorrow. His wife can pick him up. Now, room 287. Ms. Linda, she's been taking 50 mg tablets of phenhydramine for allergy for about a week. Now the thing is, she says the tablets are making her feel really drowsy and her mouth's really dry ever since she started on the pills. So today we need to talk to the consent doctor. Also room 291. Ms. Sarah, who came to the ICU last night after valve replacement surgery. Her blood pressure is normal. We checked the other equipment to make sure everything was working properly. So we're going to turn her and check she doesn't have any pressure sores and do some respiratory therapy to help expand her lungs and teach her some breathing and coughing techniques. It's very important that the lungs are kept clear so infection doesn't build up there. She's currently, she's currently off the medication and we'll see how that goes. Okay. Room 293, Mr. Miller, is a 56-year-old that came through the emergency department and admitted for pneumonia. He is presented to the emergency department early this morning with difficulty breathing, cough and chest pain. He had a room air oxygen saturation, he has a history of a recently treated pneumonia, and we are currently giving him IV antibiotics and IV steroids. Room 298, Ms. Anderson. She's a 60-year-old female, who was admitted through emergency with chest pains today. She's abnormal ECG with a negative troponin so far and she's reporting a 5 for, for her pain that's down from 8 on admission. She's on a cardiac diet. She's aware that if she needs to go to the bathroom, she needs to press the call button but she's a bit resistant to the idea. So you need to keep an eye on her. She's also got 2 mg of morphine available for pain as needed every 4 hours. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers. Task 5B, Shift to Shift Report. Now, listen to the Shift to Shift Report again, and circle the best choice for each room and patient. This time, you will need to listen for different details.
Listen to the recording and select your answers. This is the evening shift report for Thursday, November 2nd. Room 260. Mr. Jacob is recovering. His blood pressure was high yesterday. So the concerned doctor prescribed him to continue the medicine benazepril. He is very aggressive and won't be soothed by your extra attention and may become belligerent, may become belligerent, demanding to know such things as, why isn't my treatment working? Or, why aren't my medications ready yet? Room 273, Mr. Ethan had an elective bilateral inguinal hernia repair this morning. His wound is covered and dry and his post-operative observations are stable. Temp is 37, his blood pressure 140 on 70. He's already started eating a little and his walking is tolerate. Analgesia is written up but he hasn't needed anything. He's planned for discharge tomorrow. His wife can pick him up. Now, room 287. Ms. Linda, she's been taking 50 mg tablets of phenhydramine for allergy for about a week. Now the thing is, she says the tablets are making her feel really drowsy and her mouth's really dry ever since she started on the pills. So today we need to talk to the consent doctor. Also room 291, Ms. Sarah, who came to the ICU last night after valve replacement surgery. Her blood pressure is normal. We checked the other equipment to make sure everything was working properly. So we're going to turn her and check she doesn't have any pressure sores and do some respiratory therapy to help expand her lungs and teach her some breathing and coughing techniques. It's very important that the lungs are kept clear so infection doesn't build up there. She's currently, she's currently off the medication and we'll see how that goes. Okay. Room 293, Mr. Miller, is a 56-year-old that came through the emergency department and admitted for pneumonia. He is presented to the emergency department early this morning with difficulty breathing, cough and chest pain. He had a room air oxygen saturation, he has a history of a recently treated pneumonia, and we are currently giving him IV antibiotics and IV steroids. Room 298, Ms. Anderson. She's a 60-year-old female, who was admitted through emergency with chest pains today. She's abnormal ECG with a negative troponin so far and she's reporting a 5 for, for her pain that's down from 8 on admission. She's on a cardiac diet. She's aware that if she needs to go to the bathroom, she needs to press the call button but she's a bit resistant to the idea. So you need to keep an eye on her. She's also got 2 mg of morphine available for pain as needed every 4 hours. You will now have 45 seconds to review your answers.